Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. And, uh, my name is Joe Stanhope. I'm the chair of the Aerosmith Water Service Committee. And uh, on my immediate right is uh, Barry Avis representing the town of Qualicum Beach and Mark Lefebvre representing the town city of Parksville. On, uh, over on the other side, Carol Mason, the chief administrative officer for the regional district of Nanaimo. Fred, uh, says Fred. Fred Mason, the, the Manson Army. No relation to you. The, uh, <laughs> The uh, CAO for Parksville, and where's Mark? Mark Mark Brown will show up, I guess, uh, eventually over there. We have the engineers Bob Harari, Bob Weir, Mike Square, Squire, and John Finney. So uh, there we go. Well, there will be an opportunity for the audience to ask questions uh, at the um, at the end of the meeting. So first of all, I'd like to uh, um, the uh, minutes of the meeting held March 17th. So move them. Moved by Barry, seconded by so Mark. Any errors or omissions? All those in favor? Contrary, the motion carries. Any business arising? Okay, we're going on to uh, reports. The Aerosmith Water Service Capital Presentation. With us today to do a final you. summary presentation of the conceptual planning, budgeting, and scheduling report on future AWS capital plan requirements are. Uh, Mr. Matthew Penny, he's the project manager of Associated Engineering. And Keith Kohut, the assistant project manager from Associated Engineering. And fresh out of retirement is, uh, <laughs> and just returning is, uh, I, I understand it's only two or three hours out of retirement. And returning from Morocco is Mr. Rick Corbett, formerly the project manager of Associated Engineering. So uh, with further ado, I'll turn it over to Matt for the presentation. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mike, for that introduction. Um, on behalf of Associated Engineering's uh, team, uh, we're certainly grateful to the have the opportunity to present this uh, presentation really on the findings of the, uh, the study that was conducted since 2009 and uh, some of the conclusions and, uh, and also a, an overview of the, uh, the path forward. Um, this is an outline um, of the presentation today that I'm going to provide. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the study, the objectives of the study. Uh, we'll look at five uh, key conclusions that uh, came out of the study. There were several, but uh, I want to touch on, on five of them. Um, we'll look at the selection process around the uh, intake and water treatment plant siting. Go through the process that we, we followed for that. And then looking forward, we'll look at the, uh, the water supply program, what it will look like over the next few years, um, and, then, and then really some more detail on the uh, activities that we need to look at for uh, uh, 2011 and then, and, and then beyond as well. So the study objectives were, uh, were several, and, and these were the key ones. We, uh, we, we looked at a, uh, a review of the prior work that had been done for the AWS system. Uh, in determining future water supply needs for the AWS. <clears throat> this included a review of the uh, water demands, uh, potential growth, population, uh, population growth, uh, and really all the work that had been done prior to, to uh, us being involved in 2009. Uh, a couple of other key, key considerations were to determine the site and development concept for a new intake and the water treatment plant on the Englishman River and also to determine how, um, how the surface water, which is also termed the bulk water supply, uh, could be managed along with groundwater resources uh, over the next 40 years. 40 years is an appropriate uh, planning time frame um, for a couple of reasons. Um, many of the water system components, pipes, uh, treatment plants, etc., have an effective life of several decades. And also 40 years is a, is a reasonable um, time frame for estimating future demand um, based on growth or other, other factors. The study commenced with a number of um, stakeholder meetings um, that had, particularly with stakeholders that had of an interest in the Englishman River uh, watershed. Following the stakeholder meetings, which provided a, 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 re, a, a really good background of the issues and the concerns around the Englishman River watershed, uh, we developed a series of uh, discussion papers um, since uh, 
beginning in the project in 2009. And these discussion papers dealt with such issues as uh, water demands, uh, water intake and treatment plant locations, water supply and strategic plan. And we issued 14 uh, discussion papers and, and, dis and, and had uh, meetings with the, the various uh, technical um, members of the, the AWS uh, to dis really to go over the findings in those discussion papers. And then in, in 2010, we issued a draft summary report followed by a, um, the final report, which is, is actually dated for today, uh, issued today. So what conclusions can we draw from the study? Uh, I'm going to touch on five of them here. Um, the, the first one is that, uh, as, as we know in this region, climate change uh, will lead to more extreme events, both drought conditions and flood events. But what does this mean for the Englishman River system? Uh, the, the conclusion here is that during extreme drought conditions, there may be insufficient water in the Englishman River to meet current fishery, fisheries release requirements and domestic water license extraction quantities. And I should quantify or, or qualify this by saying that this is based on some reasonably high uh, water demand uh, projections um, going forward. Uh, and it does, but, but those projections certainly allow for potentially for increased commercial, agricultural, and other institutional water use, in addition to some moderate uh, um, residential uh, water demand increases. The second conclusion um, is that certainly over the next 40 years that uh, there will be a combination, the water supply for AWS will be a combination of groundwater and uh, surface water from the Englishman River. Um, given that groundwater is, is really the, the least expensive source of supply in comparison with, with surface water, uh, it is certainly the case that uh, existing groundwater wells uh, will continue to be operated. Um, these wells currently aren't used, aren't used uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So there is some capacity overall on an annual basis um, to extract more groundwater from the system. This is on an annual basis and it looks at all of the aquifers associated with the region, which, which number approximately 14. But any, in, any particular aquifer, we certainly will look at uh, what needs to be looked at and be very careful about is that the uh, sustainable yield is not exceeded uh, for any one particular aquifer. But groundwater isn't the whole picture. Uh, by 2050, we project that about 50% of the overall annual water supply will come from the Englishman River. Over the next 40 years, um, the service areas that are provided water from, from AWS will, will require differing quantities of water at different times. For the city of Parksville and the Nanus air service areas, that, that, that need is almost immediate in terms of the bulk water supply. Uh, we have that listed as uh, 2016. The projected need in 2050 for bulk water, that's from the Englishman River, represents more than 70%. So 70% of the water for those two service areas will need to come from, um, from the Englishman River. We look at the French Creek and Qualicum Beach service areas. Uh, the need for bulk water is, is uh, either to be determined or further out, um, further out over those over the next uh, 40 years. Um, the, these values that we're showing here are, excuse me. These values here that we're showing are based on some assumptions, and I just wanted to go over some of those assumptions. Uh, this assumes that, I, I mentioned earlier, that we would look at uh, further annual extraction of groundwater. These values here assume a 50% increase in groundwater on an annualized basis from across the region as an increase. Um, with those values, if e each of the individual members as we go forward really needs to look very, a lot more closely at their groundwater supplies in terms of redundancy, in terms of risk to uh, climate change issues, to uh, seismic events, those sort of things. This, each of the partners needs to really look at this in terms of what is the sort of uh, 
guaranteed or the, the uh, amount of water that they can reasonably extract from, from their aquifers. And that, that needs to be looked at on an individual basis for each of the aquifers and each of the well fields. Water will be extracted from the Englishman River directly, and that's, that's certainly the case. Um, there is an opportunity, however, and, it, and it, it may be an exciting opportunity here, to actually attenuate the amount of water that would be extracted during the high summer periods from, from the Englishman River. And this is through a process or a method called aquifer storage and recovery, ASR. And essentially, uh, water during the winter wetter months would be extracted from or taken from the Englishman River where there's an excess of water at that time, treated and then actually injected into um, an appropriate aquifer for storage. And, and the water would be stored during those winter months and then in the summer months that water can be pumped out of that, aqu that aquifer storage and used in the distribution system. The value of that is that in the future, uh, 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 in terms of um, the summertime flows in the Englishman River can be maintained at the higher flows because you're actually using water from the aquifer as opposed to directly from the river. Secondly, the size of the water treatment plant would be reduced because you're able to use this source. Essentially, it's a third water source um, for, for uh, supply and that would reduce the cost of the water treatment plant. The water treatment plant would operate more continuously in the winter times, winter time, uh, because it's actually producing water for this storage function. Um, but we know that the, um, the, water, uh, the, the water treatment plant or the Englishman River water is actually gonna be a peaking water supply um, because of its additional, the additional cost for treatment um, in comparison with groundwater. Uh, the fifth uh, major conclusion is that based on a broad review of sites along the lower Englishman River, we've identified, or the team has identified, that the best location for the water treatment plant is in the industrial area adjacent to the Parksville Works Yard, and the best location for the uh, water intake is upstream of Highway 19. And the next few slides kind of explain the process that we went through to get to that, to, 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 to come to those conclusions. The first process we went through was something called a constraint mapping process. Um, essentially, the, the lower 10 kilometers of the river, uh, both left and right bank of the river, was uh, basically segmented into uh, what I would call logical blocks here. They may not look very logical, but um, they were basically based on um, existing property lines, major changes in direction in the river, and, um, and also uh, major um, rights of way. For example, Highway 19 runs through here with the railway, uh, 19A runs through here as well. And then the BC Hydropower uh, power right of way is in through here. Using this uh, methodology, we, we looked at five, five major uh, areas, including geotechnical considerations, ecological considerations. So primarily, the, primarily these are on the lower portion of the, the, the river here. There are some areas up here which were actually discounted later because of the, their remote distance in terms of connecting water mains and, and locating water treatment plant. So we focused on this lower area here. From that, we developed um, four shortlisted sites, and I appreciate there's only three shown there, but the fourth is actually a combination of um, site one and site three. So site one is uh, a location for both the water treatment plant and the intake uh, around the Highway 19 corridor there. This, the, that's site 1A, and then 1B was actually an intake at site 3 with the water treatment plant being up at site 1. So there were actually four, four overall sites that we uh, shortlisted to have a look at further. So then we went into a much more rigorous uh, um, 
comparison of those four sites, and we used a, a, a methodology called decision criteria, and this was based on a really on a sustainable triple bottom line approach, which. Uh, for those of you that, that may not know, the triple bottom line looks at environmental factors, social factors, and economic factors. Quite often with these sorts of uh, comparisons, we will also look at risk. And so each of those uh, four main criteria were broken down into sub-criteria that, that were identified as very specific and, and, and important to the Englishman River uh, bulk water supply system. So on the basis of, of these sub-criteria, we did a, what we call a pairwise comparison of the, of the four siting options and basically compared one site to another to say whether it was equal in terms of these criteria here or better or weakly better or all the way up to much, much better. So they, they were all ranked in a, in a pairwise comparison. And then through, that, through the, the development of that, that process, we also weighted the main criteria, um, essentially the environmental, social, and risk factors were all weighted approximately equal, with the economic factors, that is the cost, uh, weighted quite a, bit, quite a bit less than the other three. And the reason for doing that in this sort of comparison is that the economic, the cost of each of these options was approximately equal, so we didn't want to overly weight the, the economic cost when we were looking at the key things which were environmental, social, and then the various risk factors. Preferred site was 1A, and 1A is that site that is, has the water treatment plant located uh, adjacent to the existing City of Hartsville Public Works Yard, and the intake location is upstream of uh, Highway 19. The key reasons for that decision, based on the the decision criteria process that we went through were uh, that the intake location is located upstream of all major transportation corridors. So that's 19, 19A, um, and also the, the, the rail bridge. So from a water risk, uh, water contamination risk perspective, that certainly has a high, a high ranking. Um, in terms of public, act, uh, public uh, Location and uh, the, the, the location at Highway 19A, or excuse me, upstream of Highway 19, had a, a low public um, perspective in terms of it, it, it's, it's relatively remote, a re relatively remote location. Um, and it was uh, also, it's also related to the fact that it was quite close to the proposed water treatment, water treatment plant location, which is uh, near the public work. Public's work, works yard. Excuse me. The um, we did a, what we call a sensitivity analysis on this. So if we change the weightings that I mentioned on the social, and environmental, and the uh, risk factors, if we change the weightings substantially, how would the the scoring change here? And what we found is that for reasonable changes in the in those weightings, um, site one A still came out as the preferred uh, location. Uh, this is a, just a view of uh, Highway 19 um, in the vicinity of the Englishman River. Uh, that's the Highway 19 crossing there with the rail, the rail crossing there. The uh, intake location is proposed in this general area here. And these blue lines, if you can see them, represent what might be the raw water line running over to the water treatment plant location, which is located near the, the public work, public's work here, public works yard. In trouble with it. Um, the raw water main, uh, there's a couple of options for the raw water main. We could follow the, the river bank all the way around underneath the highway corridor here and then come up on the other side to deliver water in here. The other option is to look at a directional drilling concept um, from this location through the embankments of the river uh, and the railway and directly into the water treatment plant. Uh, that, that sort of planning or, or future look at that will be part of the next phase of, of, of work in terms of detailed design or preliminary design. Um, as far as the water treatment plant is concerned, uh, I mentioned this is near the pub public works yard. Um, we have got a site there and that site's been secured by the city. Uh, it's a former gravel pit area, so it is a, 
It's a used or a, a brownfield site, if you will. Um, its location is, or its size is certainly more than adequate for any kind of water treatment plant system that would be proposed here, um, both in terms of size and, and, and uh, configuration. Um, water treatment uh, will be required on the Englishman River for a few reasons, and, and primarily the one is uh, intermittent turbidity, which is uh, really a, a cloudiness in the water, if you will, caused by silt. There are several areas of the Englishman River that the bank systems are unstable, and, and they are responsible for the release of turbidity at different times of the year in, into the river. So treatment for removal of that turbidity is required. This particular arrangement is based on um, a conventional water treatment plant approach, which is uh, settling and filtration, and we also have uh, some provision in there for residuals treatment to reduce the amount of residuals leaving the site. So uh, what will the, looking forward here, what will the water supply program look like? Certainly in the next few years, uh, ongoing work in terms of governance and financial planning is required. Some of the process needs to be ironed out in terms of water treatment. Uh, we would look at the ASR feasibility confirmation by the end of 2013. Design and construction of the water intake uh, and the first stage of water treatment plant and the connecting mains would occur in, in the 2012 to 2016 time frame. ASR would be implemented by 2016 if it is proved to be viable. And then additional water capacity, water distribution capacity would be uh, built after that time as and when water demands would require it. So there would be a second stage of construction if the demands would be indicated. <coughs> in terms of estimated costs, um, in terms of the first stage of, of the water treatment plant and intake, uh, we have estimated this at, at a conceptual level to be about $37 million. And what would be built at this time is the intake, the raw water mains, and some of the more common uh, interconnecting distribution mains. In addition, it would be that first stage of water treatment plant designed for those, those demands up to, let's say, up to 2035, but it's, it's a first stage of, of uh, water treatment plant, um, of, of the water treatment plant sizing. That, that, that initial capacity is built and we need more capacity. The increase would be about, or the next phase of the work would be about $15 million. So um, the $37 million is the stage one, and then subsequent to that, we estimate approximately $15 million uh, once, if, if and when those water demands increase. Certainly this program should be attractive to uh, senior levels of government for funding. There's a few reasons for that. Given the regional cooperation already that's in place with the AWS and with the, with the aquifer storage and recovery elements, that will be very attractive and obviously coupled with, with the province's requirements to look at water conservation as well. So uh, looking forward uh, in terms of some details here, in 2011, um, the AWS activities that really need to take place very soon, almost right away, is, is, are, are these components here in order for, uh, for, for that uh, system, the, the, the initial construction to occur and commissioning to occur by 2016. So these include continue, continuing conceptual level planning, um, discussions with the regulators, exploring that senior government funding I mentioned, um, developing the financial rate structure models, uh, carrying out raw water characterization and, and doing some bench scale testing, piloting, looking at the ASR, and of course communications planning as well. A little further, little further on, 2012 and 2013, uh, AWS will need to engage a design consultant for the actual uh, detailed design of the, the water treatment plant and intake and, and the interconnecting water mains. Um, finalizing process, finalizing approvals, um, completing the ASR feasibility analysis, and of course uh, borrowing approval as well. And then 2014 to 2016, that's when uh, the majority of those, that $37 million would be, 
would be expended, and that would be um, really for the construction of the intake and the other and the water treatment plant. But that would likely occur in 2015, 2016, in terms of the the major capital uh, major capital costs. Construction would occur in this time, commissioning, and then obviously as we go beyond 2016, there would be the the um, the ongoing operation and maintenance of the new facility. And with that, um, certainly like to answer any questions from the board.